Hi everyone, this is Vaibhav from Aussie's Migration. Uh, I hope everybody's keeping safe from COVID-19 and uh, keeping themselves to the home and making sure that none of their relatives or themselves go out without any reason. And I wish everybody safe and sound and wish uh, good health for everybody. Now today, uh, today, in today's live, we are going to discuss about the Section 48 and how it impacts the candidates who are on a bridging visa at the moment and who are not able to lodge an onshore application because of the Section 48. Now let's understand the Section 48 because that's the root problem. Right? So first we have to understand what is the problem. So Section 48 states that if the candidate or the applicant is in Australia in, in a migration zone and does not hold a substantive visa while they want to lodge another substantive visa application, right? and they are on a bridging visa for example, let's say, and does not hold the substantive visa, holds a bridging visa or uh, A or B or C, and after last entering Australia, their last visa application was refused. So according to section 48, if you fall in under this situation, then you cannot apply for uh, any substantive visa other than protection visa or partner visa onshore while you're in Australia. So that means that you have to go offshore and lodge your application, right? Uh, there could be another um, kind of uh, candidates who are in Australia and they do hold the substantive visa. For example, let's say somebody applied for, so I'll, I'll take an example of all of these cases so that we understand how uh, you know you might be falling into one of these categories. So somebody who held a subclass 485 visa, let's say that expired in February and they applied for a student visa. Um, now their student visa is, has been refused and after the refusal, they've got invitation to apply for a permanent visa, let's say subclass 189, 190 or 491. Or second category of the people would be that somebody has, uh, or let's say student or applicant has a subclass 485 visa that is about to expire now, but they obviously lodged a student visa application beforehand so that they could make it, uh, lodge the visa application at least a week ago or so, and their, their visa was refused. And now they're still on a substantive visa and their student visa has been refused and they've applied for a review of their application or visa refusal with the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. Uh, so this could be another category of the clients or the third category of the clients who have who's got a substantive visa for let's say another two three months they've lost under the visa that has expired uh, that that has been refused but the section 48 does not impact them if they've been invited to apply for a visa they can still apply so that doesn't affect section 48 does not affect them now most uh, vulnerable people are the first category because they do not hold a substantive visa so they have to find alternative solution, which we will discuss shortly. Uh, the second category of the people who host the substantive visa, but that is about to expire and uh, they've got an invite to apply for a subclass 189, 190 or 491, then they must lodge the application before their current substantive visa expire so that they can get a bridging visa A for the new application that is subclass 189, 190 or 491 or any other visa that they wish to lodge. Um, so, the reason is because once their current substantive visa expires, because the last visa application for a student visa, let's say a subclass 485 visa is about to expire in two days time, you got an invitation, you applied for a student visa which has been refused. So you still got a bridging visa A for that refusal or, or for a student visa application because that still remains for 28 days to 35 days. And you also got um, the uh, current substantive visa and you are intending to apply for a merit review for your student visa but you got an invitation to apply for uh, the permanent visa, let's say subclass 49190 or 491, then you should lodge it before your current visa expires so that you can get a bridging visa. That is a very simple solution for you guys. Now, the first category, as I said, the first category of the people who does not hold a substantive visa, the last visa application has been refused and they're currently waiting for a decision on their merit review or a judicial review application and now they have been invited to apply for a subclass 189, 190 or 491 visa. Now what to do with these things? What or how to act in this situation? So the first thing is we need to understand that there could be a multiple options for you guys but what I will do now is I will list out the options based on each category so let's say for this particular scenario and uh, from we will go for the first based solution, then the second based solution, and then the third based solution. So that you understand what is the first 
solution that you should try and apply if that doesn't work then you go to the plan b and then you go to the plan c right now the people who are uh, on barred by section 48 as i explained earlier that if you are on a bridging visa a or b and your last visa application was refused so you cannot lodge a visa lodge a visa onshore and your agent or you might already know that you have to go offshore and lodge the visa but you don't know now how we will deal with the situation because of this covid 19 impact on travel authorities uh, or let's say travel authorizations and coming back to australia right so the first solution to this is if you have been invited for subclass 190 or 491 visa then the best way to deal with the situation is to contact the state that has nominated you and ask them and explain this situation to them that you are not able to go offshore and launch your visa application at the moment because if you go offshore you will not be able to return to australia and you might lose your jobs and that might have it might affect you and how it will bring hardship to your life so and then see if they can re-invite you after so take the permission from them saying that you will re-invite me after let's say three months or four months when the situation gets better and the borders are open so if they agree to do it simple wait for uh, the borders to reopen once the borders are reopened you approach the state again because they've already been confirmed in writing with you that they will be giving you the nomination if they have done that then only follow this step so if the state does not give you in writing probably not the best way to go for this option so if you speak to the state they agree it you get that email in writing then wait for this situation to get better once the borders are opened you go offshore take the bridging visa b go offshore lodge your visa come back right now that's the best solution that you can have for people who have been invited for subclass 190 or 491 now the second base solution what if the state refuses to do this or what if you've been invited for subclass 189 visa then obviously you have to look at the alternative options now the alternative option is that you request for the regime visa b with the department now generally for the applicants who have uh, lodged a temporary visa application and they're waiting for a decision on their merit reviews or judicial review the department only grants for three months bridging visa b right however probably the best uh, second best solution that you have is request the government when you apply for a bridging visa b you put in a special request in it for a 12 months bridging visa b now why is that because if they grant you a 12 months bridging visa b then you can go offshore obviously i would if i were in the similar situation then i would have waited for 50 days because my invitation is valid for 60 days i would have waited for 50 days or so and then take the bridging visa b in the meantime for 12 months if the 12 months bridging visa b is granted then i would go offshore uh, anytime when i'm whenever i'm comfortable i'll go offshore lodge my visa wait offshore because i've got a bridging visa b for 12 months as soon as the borders of, are, of for Australia are open to come back from any country, you can come back to Australia and your bridging visa B will be, obviously, then you'll be reinstating your bridging visa A. So this is the second base solution for people who have been invited for subclass 189, 190 or 491 or any other application that you wish to launch, obviously. But generally, the skilled visas have the invitation and these invitations are only valid for 60 days. So that's the reason that they, can, they have to launch the visa within 60 days. So this is the second base solution of applying for a bridging visa B for up to 12 months period. And if you get that, then nothing can be better than this. However, in this situation, in this case, you will have to wait for a certain time until the borders are open overseas, but you have a 12 months bridging visa B so that as soon as the borders are open, you can come back. Right? What if the department, so third case scenario is, what if the Department of Home Affairs refuses that we cannot give you 12 months bridging visa B and they only grant a three months bridging visa B. Then in this case scenario again, I would probably wait for some more time and see how the situation goes. Obviously because I've got invitation and the invitation is valid for 60 days. So I can obviously wait for the 60 days and see how, how the situation goes. Now I will probably wait for 40 days or so and then see how the situation is going. If the situations are better, then I'll act accordingly. If not, then because I've got only three months bridging visa B, I would try to leave the country closer to the end of my invitation. So I will go overseas, lodge the visa, and wait there. Right now, if the borders are open within three months' time, again because I've got a bridging visa B, I can come back to Australia and then reinstate my bridging visa A as soon as I can. 
come back to Australia. Fine. And this will find a very good solution for you guys. Correct. So that's the third best solution. And let's say what if the the time takes more or let's say if, if the Australian government does not open the border within that three months time. So that will be the fourth case scenario. So if you have applied for a bridging visa B, you went overseas, you lost your visa. Now your bridging visa B has expired. So you've lost your subclass 18919 or 491. Now you're waiting for the decision. So obviously the first option for you guys is just wait overseas for your subclass 189190 or 491 visa to be granted. And once the visa is granted, you can come back if the borders are open. And obviously, if you're uh, if if you are granted subclass one eight nine or one nine zero visa, even though the borders are not open, because you are an Australian citizen or PR now, you are really an Australian permanent resident, so you can definitely request for a travel by filling up the online application uh, form, which require which is required to fill in before and take the permission from Australian government before you initiate your travel from overseas. So the fourth case scenario, the best, uh, then after, you know, if, if, you, if your bridging visa B has expired and you're not able to come back on the bridging visa B, you will have to apply for a visitor visa. Now, once you apply for a visitor visa, obviously you have to satisfy the department that why you need to be granted a, bridging visa, a visitor visa. Now for visitor visa, as everybody knows that we have done the live before as well, that visitor visa requires certain requirements to be met and one of the requirements is that the reason why you wish to visit in Australia. So in this reason I would put in multiple things explaining my genuineness of why I want to visit Australia and why my what is my intention. The first thing is uh, the visitor visa has a provision in the policy that if you are waiting for any judicial review or merit reviews and you have to attend the hearings for those reviews you can apply for a visitor visa so that you can and, and request the department to grant the visitor visa so that you can come to Australia and attend your hearings for either a merits review or a judicial review. Right. So apply for a visitor visa and then wait for the visitor visa to be granted. Once the borders are open and if the visitor visa is granted and the borders are open, you can come back to Australia and then request the bridging visa A for your judicial review or merit review to be reinstated because uh, your bridging visa A would have been uh, also expired because you are you did not come back to Australia or let's say did not come back to Australia so that's why it would have been ceased not expired um, and you will have to request for the bridging visa A to be reinstated because you have a valid application for a merit reviews or a judicial review in process which is not finalized at the moment so therefore the bridging visa A can be granted to you okay, so these are the options that somebody would have in this kind of scenario where you are stuck in Australia and you want to lodge your permanent visa application and you have been invited to apply for a visa but because of the uh, coronavirus pandemic the, the travel restrictions are there in, and, and especially for the people who does not have an Australian permanent visas or citizenship and they're not a family member of an Australian citizens they cannot come back to Australia so they'll be stuck overseas until they, they get the decision on their permanent visa applications so this could be the best solutions for you guys. Um, apart from this, if you guys have any questions, if, if you fall in any other category apart from this or any situations that you are stuck in, you can always message us uh, under, under, under this video in the, in the comment box and we can try and answer your questions accordingly. Also at the moment, all this group uh, as an impact of the COVID-19, many of the international students have started losing job. So we have started taking one initiative that if your, if you need any assistance or any advice, or this group is providing two weeks free. Uh, within this next two weeks, we are providing free consultation. So you can, or more than, you're more than welcome to contact us or contact the DLS branch to you and ask for the advice if you are stuck in this kind of situation on how to act and what is the best scenario or what is the best solution that applies to your case. Uh, while we understand that, um, that you know, you're not uh, an expert, in, if you have an agent, obviously, Take the expert advice as i said and even in the comment box we have mentioned that you should uh, first listen understand then take the expert advice and then act accordingly if you're doing the application um, i hope the information today we have provided is helpful to you guys and if you have any questions or if you like causes group to provide information on any other scenario or if you like if you like to see this kind of videos more then you can also tell us that what 
information that you would like to know and we can also consider doing live videos on those particular uh, uh, sections or any information that you people are thinking that are relevant to them or there are many people who are in this kind of situation we can cover those uh, kind of topics as well however as this group decides based on the priority of those uh, topics as, as i said uh, many people are stuck in this section 48 bar and that's that's the reason that we have uh, done this video to explain to everybody that how they can action uh, on their on their situation again i'll probably recap everything just for people who have probably joined the video later uh, so if your bar was section 48 uh, people who are on bridging visa what is section 48 people who are on uh, on a bridging visa who is not on substantive visa basically and have been invited to apply for any of the visa or they wish to lodge any visa application because their last visa application was refused they cannot lodge any onshore visa application so therefore they wish to apply for a visa offshore by going offshore now the solutions based solutions probably would be the option one is request if you've been invited for subclass 190 or 491 request the state government to see if they can consider this situation except in as an exceptional situation and ask the state if they can reinvite you once the borders are open if they say yes all good wait for the borders to open and then request the state to reinvite you in the new eoi or the existing UI because your invitation would have expired or the option two is apply for a bridging visa B for up to 12 months if you've been invited for subclass 189, 190 or 491 and the state has said no to you that we cannot re-invite you. Then in that case, you should apply for a bridging visa B and request the government to uh, Department of Home Affairs to uh, grant the bridging visa B for up to 12 months. Go overseas, lodge your visa, wait overseas and once the borders are open, you can come back because your bridging visa B is granted for 12 months and hopefully there are li very likely chances that the department would open up the borders in the next 12 months, right? As as the as as, a, as the Australian government has announced the border closure for six months, hopefully the borders will go open up within the next 12 months. If the bridging visa B is not granted for 12 months, then the third option is take the bridging visa B for three months, wait for the bridging visa, um, go overseas, lodge the visa, wait for the borders to open up, and if the borders opens up within that three months time, you can always come back. Uh, try to launch the decision ready application as well, I would recommend, so that the decisions can be made faster if the department is have to grant the visa. And if your visa is granted, then also that, that will give you a very good chance to travel back to Australia because then you'll be an Australian permanent resident if you have got invited to apply for a subclass 189 or 190. And the last option is if your regime is at the expires and the still borders are not open, and when the borders gets open, you can apply for a visa to visa explaining the situation that you have a uh, unfinalized application for a merit reviews or judicial review and you want to return to australia for that review application at the same time your application for an offshore permanent visa application is in process and if you get that um, uh, um, if you get that a visitor visa then you can come back to australia and allow, get your pigeon visa a reinstated so that you can apply for you can stay in australia until your merit review or judicial review application is finalized i hope this information will help you guys understanding uh, the next course of actions if you fall in any of this category uh, all this group will probably be live again with the further information on this kind of scenarios and topics uh, if you like the information that we have provided today we request you to leave a good feedback about us on our, our social media pages and also like and share this video thank you very much and be safe